Good Monday morning, girls and boys. This is going to be our last week of Bible stories. And then after that, there will be no more Bible. So we're going to finish our journals this week, our Passion Week journals. And then you're finished for Bible for the year. We're slowly starting to wrap things up and I've decided that this is a good place to end our Bible for the year. So our story for today is about a plot against Jesus. So a plan that was made against Jesus. You'll remember that by this time, a lot of the people really loved Jesus, the regular people, but the scribes and Pharisees, the priests in the temple, they did not like Jesus, right? Because everybody started following Jesus. People were not really listening to them anymore. So our story is from Matthew 26, verses one through 6. So it's Wednesday now, and Jesus had finished talking in the temple. And as he was leaving the temple, he said to his disciples, you know that in a few days, it's the Passover feast. And then the son of man, then I, am going to be betrayed to be crucified. He warned his disciples, but I don't think they really clued in what was really going to happen. In the meantime, as Jesus is leaving, he's going to go to Bethany. Jesus is on his way to Bethany. While he is traveling to Bethany, the chief priests and the scribes, they got together and they said, you know what, let's go to the house of Caiaphas. He's the high priest. We're going to make a plan there. We're going to make a plan against Jesus. So they all go to Caiaphas' house. And while they're there, they say, all right, what should we do? We want to arrest him. We don't like this man. But in the end, they decide we can't really do very much to arrest Jesus now because the people really like him. The people will be mad at us if we arrest him. So we have to keep our eyes and ears open and find a way that we can sneakily arrest Jesus without the people knowing because they wanted Jesus gone. They did not want him there anymore. So Jesus is traveling to Bethany and he comes to the house of someone called Simon. This man also lived in Bethany and he had offered Lord Jesus to come eat at his house. While the Lord Jesus is sitting there and eating in Simon's house, in comes a woman and she has a little bottle of perfume with her. But this is a very expensive bottle of perfume. What is she going to do with this bottle of perfume? Well, she walks right up to Jesus. She takes the top off the bottle and she pours it right on Jesus' head. The whole bottle empties. So you can imagine that the smell goes through the whole room where everybody is sitting and eating, right? Now the disciples are also all there and they're watching this happening. And they say to each other, what a waste. Why is she doing this? What's the use of that? The money for, if we sold that bottle, the money from that bottle, we could have used it and give money to the poor. But Jesus defends the woman. He says, you know, disciples, she is doing this for my burial. She is preparing me for my burial, but they don't understand. Mary leaves again. And in the meantime, Judas also, Judas the disciple, he walks out of the house where they're eating in Simon's house. He has a purpose. He doesn't love the Lord Jesus, not like the other disciples do. He said he has a plan for me in his mind. He goes to the chief priests. He says, all right, everybody, what will you give me if I deliver, if I bring Jesus to you? Because Judas knows that these people, the chief priests, the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, they want Jesus. He knows that. And Judas is thinking to himself, if I can make a deal, I can maybe get something out of this for myself. Because Jesus' disciples know Jesus' plans. They know where Jesus is all the time. So Judas thought, you know what? I can go and make a deal. So he goes to these people and they say, well, how about... We give you 30 pieces of silver if you can bring Jesus to us. Sneakily deliver him to us. Judas says, all right, we've got a deal. And just like that, the Lord Jesus is betrayed. Do you know what betray means? To betray someone or something means to give it to the enemy. To give them over to the enemy. And that is what Judas has done. He has betrayed Jesus. He has given him 
to the enemy. And ever since that deal was made, Judas was looking for ways that he could deliver Jesus to the Jewish leaders, to the scribes and the Pharisees. Because remember, they still wanted to do it sneakily because all the people loved him. So if Judas could do it, then they would be very happy. Now, 30 pieces of silver, that's what Jesus was betrayed for. 30 pieces of silver is about how much money they would buy a slave for in the time of Jesus. So Jesus was traded, he was betrayed for the money used, the amount of money that was also used to buy a slave. And that's sort of where our story ends today. So we can focus on Mary, Mary, the woman who poured the oil on the head of Jesus, the ointment, the perfume, right? So in your journals, you're going to write on the Wednesday page and what the disciples would have seen on the Wednesday page. Well, the disciples would have heard, they would have seen Mary coming and pouring the, the perfume on the head of Jesus. The disciples also maybe would have noticed Judas leaving where they were eating with Simon and wondering what Judas was up to. None of the other disciples knew what Judas was doing. Only Judas knew that, right? So keep in mind as you're writing what the other disciples knew, what they would have written about what they saw and about what they heard. Yeah? All right, have a good day. Enjoy writing in your journals. And Richard just came from, from work. Maybe he wants to come say hi a quick second. Hi. <laughs> We're going to have lunch now. So enjoy writing in your journals for the Wednesday about Mary pouring the oil or the disciples noticing Judas leaving. And then tomorrow we'll write about the Thursday part of our journals. Have a good day.